Okay, so in this video, I want to do a very quick refresher of the nth roots of unity. Okay, so let's let's go back and review some um, some complex uh, notation. So um, let's say you have a complex number x, which is let's say it's of the form cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so then our notation for this is we write it as e to the i theta. Actually, let me let me write it as theta 1, because I'll also write y as cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 is e to the i theta 2. Now we might ask, what's x times y? Okay, so well, we'll get, obviously, it's cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. And if you multiply it all out and you simplify, you obtain that it's cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i sine of theta 1 plus theta 2, which you could write as e to the i theta 1 plus theta 2. So the interesting thing is when you, when you multiply these complex numbers, these angles add up. Now you'll notice that here, I'm, I'm assuming that my complex numbers lie on the unit circle. They have magnitude 1. So what does this picture look like? Well, if you were, if you were working on the complex plane, that's the real axis, the imaginary axis. Let's say that's the unit circle. That's the point x equal to e to the i theta 1. So that's, that angle is theta 1. And let's say that's the point y. So that's theta 2. That's e to the i theta 2. So now, where is x times y? Well, what you would do is you would, you would add another theta 1 here, and you'd look at this number here. This is x times y. Right? And that angle becomes theta 1 plus theta 2. All right, so, so now with this, this in hand, uh, let's look at what are the complex nth roots of unity. So these are the solutions to the equation x to the n equal to 1. And turns out there are exactly n complex uh, solutions to this. And if you draw our diagram again, this is, this is the complex plane. That's 1. Well, then what you do is you divide this angle 2 pi into n equal pieces. And this would be omega, where this is 2 pi over n. So if n was 12, then these would be all the 12 solutions. That would be omega, omega squared, omega cubed, fourth, fifth, sixth, nine, eleven, etc. Okay, so how do you see this? Well, what's omega to the n? Well, if you, if you multiply, if you, if you raise it to the nth power, what you're doing is you're adding this angle to itself n times, and you, you come back all the way to, the, to 2 pi, which is, which is 0, and so you, that's 1. Okay. So now, here are some interesting properties of, of the roots of unity. So if you look at 1 plus omega plus omega squared, plus omega to the n minus 1. What's this value? Well, this turns out to be 0. Why is that? Because, because when you add complex numbers, you add them like vectors on this complex plane. So 1 is this vector, omega is this vector, omega squared is that vector, and so on. And so if you add up all these vectors, well, they're pointing in every direction, and they cancel out completely. Now, the same thing holds if you, if you were to look at 1 plus omega to the j plus omega to the 2j plus omega to the n minus 1 times j. So you want to, if you want to evaluate this, well, again, so for example, if you start with omega squared, omega to the fourth, sixth, and so on, you just go around this, this circle an even number of times, and it, everything cancels out. So this sum is 0, provided j is not equal to 0. But if, of course, if j is 0, then this is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, n times, so it's n if j equal to 0. 
more generally, if you're thinking of j as an integer, then if, if j is a multiple of n. Okay, so how do you show this? Well, you could just do this by summing the geometric series. You could say, well, this is omega to the n times j minus 1 over omega minus 1. And of course, sorry, it's divided by omega to the j minus 1. Now, as long as j is not 0, this denominator is non-zero. As, as long as j is not a multiple of n, it's not, it's not 0. But then omega to the j n, well, since omega to the n is 1, this, the denominator is 0, so this is exactly 0, except for the case where j is 0, in which case, of course, we got, we got n, as we saw before. Now, let me just say one, one, point out one more thing about this. So let's look at what's the conjugate of omega. Well, what's the conjugate of omega? It's cosine 2 pi over n minus i sine 2 pi over n. Okay. This is the same thing as cosine of minus 2 pi over n plus i sine of minus 2 pi over n. Okay, so, so if this was omega, this is omega bar. So, so this is the same thing as omega to the n minus 1, which, by the way, is the same thing as 1 over omega, or omega to the minus 1, because omega to the n is 1. Okay, so, so what you get is omega bar, the complex conjugate of omega, is the same as omega to the minus 1. 